Praise God. Praise God. Let the people of God say Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exalt, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here we also call in us to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to be talking about a believer's journey to perfection. A believer's journey to perfection. Our short reading is from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 21, verse 15. We stop at 19. John 21, 15 to 19. And our case study is Simon Peter. Let us pray. Dear Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, Father, we come before thee to say thank you, Lord. For thou art God, there is none like thee. None can compare, O Lord. To you. And Father, here we have come to learn of your word. Oh Father, let your word come to our hearts. Oh Father, let it mix with faith, O oh Lord. Let it bless our soul, O oh Lord. Let your word have a free course in us and be glorified in us. Thank you, dear Father God. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen and amen. Our foundation text is from the Epistle to the Church at Philippi, chapter 1, verse 6. Philippians, chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, hallelujah, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How does a believer come to perfection? How does a believer come to perfection? We are saved immediately. That is the beginning of our journey. To perfection. Simon Peter, with John and James, the sons of Zebedee, had caught nothing and were cleaning their nets, preparing to finish for the day. The Lord Jesus appeared and asked to use Simon's boat for preaching. Afterward, the Lord asked him to cast his net. Peter told the Lord of how they had tried all day and caught nothing. But he said, Because of your word, I will let down the nets. Amazingly, they caught so much fish that filled two boats. Then the Lord responded, because after Peter saw that miracle, he said, Depart from me, O Lord. For I'm a sinful man. And the Lord Jesus responded to Peter's confession of not being worthy, that from now on he will be fishers of men. The Lord Jesus said, Fear not. From now on you will be fishers of men. Hallelujah. Having brought their catch to shore, they left everything and followed the Lord immediately, the Bible says. We can take this as the moment of Simon's salvation. By Simon following the command of the Lord Jesus and declaring his spiritual bankruptcy, he said, I'm a sinful man. Depart from me, O Lord. And that was him declaring his spiritual bankruptcy, you see. 
He didn't say, oh, I was nice to my neighbor yesterday. I've never killed anybody. I don't smoke. I don't drink. He said, no, I'm a sinful man. And the subsequent forsaking of his business to follow Christ, Simon's life changed immediately. From that day on, Peter became saved. Whoever confesses with their mouth, the Bible says, the Lord Jesus, and believes in their heart that God raised Christ from the dead shall be saved. Anyone who does this is the one who heard Christ's word and believes in him who sent the Lord Jesus. Such a person has obeyed God's command that all should turn to him. When you hear the word of God and you say, you know what? It's true. I'm not perfect. I need saving. I can go to heaven in my own goodness. When you come to that level, you are obeying the Lord's command. And you are saying, Lord, I, I give it all to you. I give it all to you. I put my faith in your death, burial, and resurrection. This is an instant one-off event. Once you do that, and you mean it, and you're committed to that, that one-off event, means you are saved. And the moment that happens, God wipes off all records of sin. It doesn't matter the kind of sin you have committed. God wipes the slate clean and puts the righteousness of Christ in our account because we have said, God, I put my faith in your only begotten son that only through him can I make it to heaven where you are. Once you do that and you mean that from your heart, God says, that's it. Justify. Never sin. Not guilty. Why? Because now you have taken on the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So we become justified in Christ's perfection. Let's go to the gospel according to St. John. Chapter 1 verse 12. John 1 12. But as many as received him, received who? The Lord Jesus. To them he gave the power. The power being talked about here is not talking about, um, uh, there's a Greek word for, three Greek words for, for power, really. There's dunamis, from where we got dynamite, that is to blow things up and explosive and all that. No, that's not the one we're talking about. And there's another one that is called exousia. You see, this is where you have the authority, the, the uh, power of attorney that Christ says, you have this. I'm giving this to you. This is the, this is the one he's talking about. He gives, he transfers the authority to us that I give you my authority to now become my son. So he has given us the power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. My death became his and his life became mine. Hallelujah. My death became his and his life became mine. Moving on. Once we are saved immediately, then the journey begins. We are changed progressively. Hallelujah. Why we are saved immediately, looking and acting like a saved person, however, is progressing. After Simon Peter had been saved, he still showed bad temper. On many occasions, he spoke rashly without thinking of the consequences of his words. I like to say he had food in, uh, food in mouth, 
mouth disease, you see. He was always putting his foot in his mouth. He would later deny Christ and even curse. He showed he was fearful as well. Nevertheless, the Lord knew Simon Peter's heart. See, it's always about the heart. That is the foolishness of those people that put on religion and they think God will see that and he will give them a pass mark. Who are you kidding? It's always about the heart. God is not looking at your religion. He's looking at your heart. It doesn't matter how many times you go to your fellowship in the week. It doesn't matter how long your, your, your bishop robe is. God is not looking at all that. He's looking at your heart. So the Lord knew Simon's Peter, uh, Simon Peter's heart and that he was truly saved. Only that his behavior as a Christian will have to develop over time. There are times that genuine believers may act contrary to how the Bible expects us to behave. Uh, we did a topic a few weeks back when Christians act crazy. You see, there are times we act crazy because we are still humans, you see. We have bad days too, you see. Uh, so times like that, we, we can fall short. This may be due to ignorance or having fallen for deception or disobedience. However, overall, there should be a marked improvement in our daily Christian living as we grow in our faith walk day by day. Uh, somebody said uh, she was in a fellowship and I was there. <clears throat> and this individual said, she said, uh, you may think I'm not a Christian, but I have my own way of, uh, of my own spirituality. I may not be like everybody else, but I, I have my own way of doing things. I'm like, really? Get out of town. Because the Bible has given us um, some specific ways that we are supposed to conduct ourselves as believers. So if your, if your behavior is always falling short and is not improving, you need to check yourself if you are indeed born again. We may be struggling. We may have times of lapses in our faith once in a while and all that and make mistakes and do what we are not supposed to do, maybe in anger or say something bad. But as a believer, when you look overall at your life, this week, this month, at the end of the year, your spiritual life ought to have improved. Your behavior ought to have improved. If it has not, something is wrong with you. However, there should be that marked improvement in our daily Christian living as we grow every day. The more fellowship we have with the Lord through the Holy Spirit, in our daily devotion of prayer and Bible meditation, the Holy Spirit becomes more active in our lives, thus changing and conforming our conversation, conduct, and character to be more like Christ Jesus. As it cancels or challenges us, as the needs may be, there are times the Holy Spirit will say, you did well over there, Josephine. You handled yourself real good. You did the Lord proud. As that lady was raving and ranting, that was good. I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. And there have been times, oh Lord, the Holy Spirit will say, Josephine Zion. And I just have to go sit in the back of the bus. Because I just messed up, you see. So he cancels us or challenges us as the need may be. A stagnant faith life may be due to spiritual laziness, which leaves a believer 
spiritually powerless and vulnerable to satanic molestations. The progressively changing Simon Peter will later take criticism from Paul. You need to know the uh, crude Simon Peter. For somebody like Apostle Paul to criticize him publicly, and he, he took it in good faith. Woo! Lord have mercy. Would have chopped his, his ear off, you see. But he was changing progressively. So when he was challenged and criticized, he kept quiet because he knew he was in the wrong, you see. He will forsake racial prejudice to mingle with Gentiles. That is the progressively changing Simon Peter. Before he would dare not do anything with a, a, a Gentile, you see. But now he seeing more light in Christ Jesus. He dropped his racism, you see. And even encouraged believers who were being mistreated by the Roman government not to repay evil with evil. Let's go to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation. The second epistle to the church at Corinth, chapter 3, verse 18. So all of us, that is believers, who have had that veil removed, can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, makes us more and more like Him, like Himself, as we are changed into His glorious image. Hallelujah. The more we look into the law of liberty of Christ Jesus, that is the Word of God, the more we are changed day by day to become more like Him. Uh, Dr. Adrian Rogers will say, you become like who you spend time with. You become more like the person you spend time with. So the more time we spend with the Lord Jesus, we become more like him. Made in his image, I am being changed. I am being changed. Until that day, hallelujah, when I fully bear his image hallelujah you can say that to yourself as well if you're a child of god made in his image i am being changed until that day when i fully bear his image hallelujah the third way or the third level that our journey as a believer takes us takes us to that we are glorified ultimately. Hallelujah. There will never come a time, and Dr. Bonas loves to say this, when the Holy Spirit will so lead you as a believer in the way of holiness that you will not need his guidance anymore. It's not going to happen. As long as you are still on this planet, there is never going to come a time when you will say, oh, finally, the Holy Spirit doesn't need to teach me anything anymore. No, it's not going to happen. The Holy Spirit's classroom is one in which a believer only graduates when we are called to heaven, either by death or by rapture. Hallelujah. Although Simon Peter had become a mild-mannered, reformed, non-biased church elder, however, he did not become perfect in his earthly body. No. Rather, he writes that according to God's promise, we look forward to a new heaven, hallelujah, and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Even though he's been changed progressively, he said, I'm still looking forward. I'm looking forward. Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things behind, I press forward, you see. We always look forward as believers. And he goes on to encourage 
believers that we should keep ourselves blameless. That is, we should keep growing in the faith until that day, what day? When we will be called to heaven, either by the way of death or by rapture. We will receive a glorified heavenly body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will make all things new. Hallelujah. And we will become as Christ is. This is when and where a believer's journey to perfection reaches the climax. Hallelujah. This is when Christ's perfection which has been imputed into our account takes a tangible physical form as we possess glorified body, incorruptible mind, and purity at divine level. Hallelujah. The best is yet to be, Corey Ten Boom will say, and it's true. The best is yet to be. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54. The epistle to the church at Corinth, chapter 15, verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, that is this decaying body, when it has put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was thinking about my, my brother who is in heaven shortly before I started preparing for this program. And I felt like, hmm, but you know what? He is made perfect already. Hallelujah. He can't be sick anymore. He can't die anymore. I'm the one that needs to keep moving now. You see, hallelujah. I will be beautiful once I make it home to wonderful. His name is Wonderful. Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I will be beautiful once I make it home to wonderful. What have we done so far? How does the believers how does a believer journey to perfection? We are, number one, saved immediately. A believer is born at the point of believing in Christ. We are changed progressively. A believer is born. A believer spiritual growth is gradual and for a lifetime. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are glorified ultimately. Believers will be made perfect when we get to heaven. As a believer, are you discouraged because your spiritual growth is slow? Huh? Are you comparing yourself to a fellow sister or a fellow brother? Do not be. Do not do that. Do not compare yourself to the other brethren. And don't be discouraged. Christ is a standard. And he is our assessor. Focus on him as your standard. And let him give you his report of your faith assessment. When he tells you, Josephine Zion, mm -mm -mm -mm, that's not right. You gave that lady a bad look. And you said in your heart. A bad word to her. Just say, Father, I'm sorry. Confess and, and agree with God. Because his assessment is perfect. Alright? If you are yet to be saved, you are in danger of eternal residence in the lake of fire. Let me say it in simple English. You are going to hell if you don't change. Where God did not plan for you to be in the first place. So why would you want to go where you are not even invited? Huh? Why? God didn't make 
make hell for you. Why would you self invite yourself to that place? That is not, that's not smart, is it? Here is your chance to change that evil by surrendering everything to Christ Jesus. Your arrogance, you better lay it in the dust. You think you are something and you are doing God a wild favor because you go to church three times a year, huh? Really? Or because you are nice to people, that will not take you to heaven. You have heaven to gain and hell to lose. If you surrender now to Christ, I was watching a documentary, the documentary that uh, the, the scientists were saying 60 million people die every year. 60 million people. You think you're better than them? Huh? You better think again. Here is your chance. I may be the last person you see alive. And I just became your worst enemy. Because now God will have to call me up and say, did you preach to her or not? Did you preach to him or not? You see. Please don't go to hell. Do not. Let the devil go to hell alone. He is bad, he is bad to everybody. Give your life to Jesus. It's for your own good. Father God. We thank you for the way of the cross, which you made the way of escape for us. Oh God, I ask that you help us, as many of us who have already be become your children, that our faith journey will not become tired, will not become weary, Holy Spirit, help us in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us in the name of Jesus. And for those who are going to want to know Jesus' page, Father, grant them, O oh Lord, an open heart, unstopped ears, and a clear heart to understand what this is all about and the urgency that is involved. For in Jesus' name have we asked. Amen and amen. A link should be coming up right now. It's called Want to Know Jesus page. If you want to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus or to be sure that you have made everything right with God, follow that link. We meet you there. Alright? Until next week, I will see you. If the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry, 